She's selling all your secrets, baby. You think that's all the secrets? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and another trick I was taught, I don't know if that you go by it. Like, if you have, if you don't have a dropper one, you can put the ink a little bit inside the cap so you don't have to put yeah. the pin all the way inside this container. Uh, one other thing, too. Uh, I don't have a paper towel over here, but usually I have one. Is on the inside, if this dries up, it's just like dry paint and it actually will seal on the surface. So when you go to try to open it, you're like, oh God, and then it goes everywhere. I have a couple shirts because of that. So just dipping it in, you can kind of see how much I've done on that surface. So from here, I don't go all the way to the nib. That's why it's actually coated in black because somebody did that. That makes it really hard to get in and get out. Uh, I would actually soak this in warm water to clean it out uh, over a while. But I mean, even with the ink on there, it will dry out. Um, some people like to have their nibs uh, on their stylus super clean and pristine so they look original. That's fine as long as it splits apart. And just to show you, you can see just unique pressure on top. You can actually mess up your line if it sticks. It'll become more like that every single time. But thick to thin, uh, you don't have to keep dipping it in every time because uh, what do we call that in uh, Photoshop? Uh, nope. The fill, yeah, keeping it filled. Thank you. So if I just keep going. Then you start to see the two prongs. See that? When they, when they split and they fall apart. Can you see that on there? Mm -hmm. And if I go mm -hmm. back in, I can dip it. There's actually a reservoir on that tip. So when you think about the tip and the way that it's drawn, here's that line down the middle. Then there's this opening. And it actually uses what's called surface tension. And it fills in that little gap with the ink so that when it comes apart, it all goes rushing out. Um, a lot of people, they, they use the stylus incorrectly. They'll go like this. But you can if you want to just have uniform lines. I use this whenever I'm hatching. Getting those lines in there. To see how much precision I'm getting instead of switching to another nib. You don't want the sound of it? No. <laughs> Does that bother you? I like no, somebody, somebody's like, hmm, Mr. Wagner, stop. nails on the chalkboard. Oh, uh, okay, so here's another thing. When you have a cup of water. Notice the lines and how they look. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's the, the contrast is different. So when you're starting, you know, in the background, you're drawing things that are in a dark space. You can do that, you can, but don't uh, absorb your entire sheet with water because that's just, it's really a sponge and will soak it all up. So I'll go back into this, do a couple more things. Um, you can think about the way that it's being used with your line, going thick to thin. Um, then when you're hatching in there, um, these are a little bit more permanent uh, when you do make a mistake. If the lines are very fluid and liquid, like you can see the buildup right here, what I tend to do is actually rotate it. You can use it to shade in. Mm. You can move it around. A lot of people actually use a brush. I want you to focus on using the stylus, but kind of the same thing. You want that brush to be wet. You can use it dry. You get more of that pressure on there, but see what happens then. Mm -hmm. And then do the same thing with water just on it. You can get that sort of texture mm. on the surface. Uh, if you do that, make sure you keep your brush in the water. It will cling on the brush. It'll pretty much ruin it. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, don't also just leave that set in your ink because that'll just get all inside. Then you'll end up like me trying to pry apart because somebody did a dirty job. Okay. <coughs> so I'm gonna leave that in there just to hold it. Uh, let's see, I think Alex was the one that wanted to see Old Faithful. If, if this is not filled all the way, if it's having a hard time reaching that in there, remember the water can help dilute it up a little bit more. But if you have one of these, you can see if hopefully it's a little bit closer. You want to press down first. You can see the air being pushed out. It's creating the bubbles. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. I'm still holding it, so I'm going to go ahead and suck up all that ink. It's in there. And you'll see like a little drop form at the tip. Just take it to the end of the cup and let it take that drop. But then when you squeeze out that ink, no, I'm not getting it. Yeah, 
I think there's a hole in this one. I'm surprised it's not dried out. No, it's working now. One more. <laughs> Somebody may have left this one out a long time ago. Oh, no. <laughs> so, make sure it's not clogged. That's the other thing. Some people like to do that. I just don't want ink to get over everybody. Nope, it's not even making bubbles on that one. Yeah, I switched to my other one, yeah. There we go. It's going to work its magic. Occasionally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a one time miracle. Well, let's switch to the other one. Oh, and I'm always a bad culprit to this. If I'm not using it, close it. Two reasons. One, you don't want it to dry out, but you could just rehydrate it. The other thing. You don't want something flying in there. Yeah, or knocking it over. I have a nice stain on my clean drawing Ooh. table. There. So How long would that take to dry? Let's watch. <laughs> Obviously, without you know, using the pen, probably so a while. Watch, watch the, the ink actually absorb into the paper. You can see the smaller dots that they're not shining as much. Uh -huh. you know, it's that idea of a sponge and being absorbent, soaking up that ink. I get the longer line. You can do a lot of cool things with that. Some people even do uh, resist on the paper, and that usually you know, requires an additive. <coughs> Watching ink dry. <laughs> <laughs> <Came> here for. <laughs> All right. So while you're watching ink to dry, <sighs> we'll switch over to one of these. I said if you wanted to use these. There's two edges. One is a little bit more blunt than the other, so you can try them both out. I'm just using the basic tip here. You can see kind of the different lines you can create. You can pull ink from that and dip it in. And you can see how liquid that ink is using the side of it. Smearing it across. We could let that dry and it becomes just as light as that. But this one's actually still wet. I could still go over it. Just like how we have mix, you know, going back and forth. Um, same thing for this, you can smear it around. Um, you can actually pull ink from that pushing around. You can blow on it, just make sure you're not going too much going <laughs> and it's going all over the place. But when you draw, you want to think about like when you guys had your sphere. I really wish I had my feather in here. You guys would have liked that. I'm trying to remember the way our light was set up on that one. So the light source is on the left, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. There's a big spotlight behind the ball. That like That's right. Point. There's one on this side going Left across. Side and yeah. you can incorporate the texture of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I got eyes. That's all right. I did that on purpose. But yeah, you can blend it in. You really can. Now, let's um, switch to a different nib so you can see. Um, as you can, maybe I'll pull this one out. There's one, I think, Sherry, you've got the one that's like a very fine point. Mm -hmm. That one does not change out. That one stays as is. That's more traditional. Now, you can also notice the way that the, co the color of the water is changing. You got another fine one in there, too, I think. Yeah, that's that very guy. fine, yeah. yeah. Uh, the brass that's on top, that's a support uh, because it is very fine. Uh, it's very flexible, very sort of fragile in that point. That's why I use because somebody didn't clean that all there. Okay. And if it really doesn't want to go in there, you just kind of give it a little shimmy and it'll go in. You do want to be careful. I mean seriously, be careful when you're doing this because it is metal. It can slice you up. Um, I think it was on I can't remember which hand it was. I sliced one of my fingers a long time ago and it's like a really nasty paper cut. Um, so just be careful. On this one, I'll let you guys pass it around, look at the tip, and then think about what shape that's going to create. It's not just that straight point. It's a bit of a, like a beak to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, so it's got that dot, it's yeah. rounded out. Like you're like saying, it's like a beat, shaping. so it kind of pitches up. It's got a different yeah. angle to it, which is pretty nice. Yeah, passing around that way. Don't want to leave anybody out. I think that one's a B6. This one? Yeah, B1. It's five off. Yeah. <laughs> See, theirs are different on the size. Small to large. That also looks like that can help you move around ink. That's on your paper. Yep. That's in blotches. That's what I was about to show you with this. <laughs> You're getting ahead of me, Derek. Oh, that's good. Lindsay? You see it, Lindsay? It's fine. But see how the tip is rounded just a little? Yeah. All right, so let me show you guys what that does. This one, again, don't dip it in all the way. You can just pull, let's imagine this is my ink wheel. You can get more rounded out lines. You can change it out in different ways with the lines. A lot of people use this for filling in. That's broader, so it fills in more. Exactly. So when you go into a particular area and sort of mashing all those you know, blots in, like I'll use this. And I'm changing my angle as I'm doing this, and that's where those broader lines are coming in, rather than the thin lines that we had like over here. So when you do like your hatching, it doesn't fill it up as much unless you dip it in. These are a little bit more calligraphy type. You know, it gives you the marks. Uh, also be careful that if you are uh, using ink and it is just saturated like that. One little trick some people use. There's my nail. Blot. No. Yeah, you can blot it, but what do you think happens? Oh, you'll oh, see it. Like, dip yeah. a bit of it in so it like absorbs the mm. ink. You know, like yeah, that. Like soak it up. Yeah. It's magic. Did they used to use in, uh, this may be a stupid question, but India ink. Bird. Yeah, so for India ink that's yeah. more yeah. permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, when I took it in high school I think that's what it used to have that funky smell. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you can kind of see it yeah. soaking up in there. Now, the reason why it's doing that is because I already got this a little damp, and that's my trick. You can kind of sit there, and you can just see it soak right up. If we used a dry one, it would still pull it up, but it wouldn't be as visible. Slow. Yeah. Just think like tie-dye. Now, again, if I just blotted it. Yeah. It's an age back, though. It is. Some people actually, uh, even with watercolor, they put salt in, and it disperses the color ink. I suggest trying that out for backgrounds. Or when you're filling in a certain block, I should have brought salt. Doesn't sugar do something like that too? You can do that. What's that? I thought sugar did something like that. Sugar can do it too. Any crystallized form that kind of disperses that. Mm -hmm. I always use salt because with your with your paper, sugar eats more than salt on that yeah. surface. I mean, it's, it's still going to eat away, but use, I would rather use salt. It's okay. the same reason they use salt on ice roads. Yeah. 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 And here's the thing: it, if you mess up, can you erase? No. Mm -hmm. Can you? You can white out. You can white out. <laughs> That'd be hard. No, so don't get attached. <laughs> don't get attached. Again, you can you know fill in your background in different ways with ink. It doesn't always need that nib. Okay. This nice textured effect. I can actually see the texture of my paper on this. So, and then you see your hands. Oh yeah, I've always seen my. Again, don't forget. This is why I left this one out. Wiping out the inside of that cap, and if you want, you can even do the edge. Keeping it nice and clean. You take care of your materials, they will take care of you. Brought to you by tickets. <laughs> All right, disperse. 